so I'm bringing you something different this week and it's that one thing that you can't be without in your garden and here's your favourite YouTubers telling you why. So I'm going to kickstart the one thing that I can't be without in my garden is my log burner. Now I know that's a new addition to my garden, however, what an impact it's already made. Not only does it make me hot drinks whenever I want, I can dry out my coat, keep all my clothes nice and dry and keep warm and also cook food on the plot when I need to. So I'm going to pass you over now to other YouTubers to tell you the one thing that they can't be without in their garden. When Danny asked me to think about what was my favourite thing that I had at the plot, I thought long and hard before my eventual decision came to me. But the more I think about it, the more I realise how valuable it is to me. And so my favourite thing up at the plot is this. It's a mic. If you need someone to go up a very wobbly ladder, there's a mic. If you need someone to make a wonky archway, you've got Mike. He can be trusted with sharp things. Mostly. And likes nothing better than to saw up random bits of wood for no apparent reason. You know your grass is in good hands when he's got out the strimmer, <laughs> even when it's run out of battery. And if you need someone to bathe an egg-bound chicken, he's your man. That's not to say there aren't drawbacks, like planting things in the wrong bed. What's that? No idea. I'm photobombing. <laughs> and there's nothing quite like, after a hard day at the allotment, thinking about what tasks you can put Mike to next, than having your own personal lift back down to the garden gate. There we have it, my favourite thing to have up at my allotment is my very own mic. Well, thanks Danny for me, including me in your feature about things that we basically can't do without. And anybody who watches my channel, Allotments for Fun and Food, will know that this is my favourite tool. And I certainly couldn't do without it. It's an oscillating hoe and it's quite lightweight. And as the name implies, the top part of this hoe rocks backwards and forwards. And the blade which sweeps across it is sharp on both sides. And it is a fantastic tool for working quickly and removing weed growth. So I'll show you. So this is a really simple tool to use and it doesn't have to be a fine tilth bed. It can be really hard because what it does is it just scrapes across the top if it's hard and goes that much deeper if the soil is soft. But all it's really doing is cutting the roots from the weeds and it doesn't remove them. You can't see them disappearing, but of course they die really quickly because they need the roots for all the goodness out of the soil. And an area like this, which is you know, fairly substantial, if you got down on your knees and tried to weed it, it would take you quite a while. With this, super quick. So, the most highly recommended tool from the Allotments for Fun and Food channel. Buy one if you see one. You won't regret it. Hello and welcome to my allotment. So Danny asked me to share the one thing I couldn't be without on the allotment and it would have to be my greenhouse. This is a custom made, recycled, upcycled, <laughs> reclaimed greenhouse. It's 11 foot by 9 foot approximately and it's been made using an old conservatory. All of the materials were sourced for free or for very little money so it took quite a long time to make but look at the joy look at that isn't that beautiful 
I have been gardening in my greenhouse now for about six months. Even before it was finished, I started to plant up this greenhouse. <laughs> and I've had a really abundant year. It's been brilliant. I have grown endless cucumbers, I have grown chilies, tomatoes, had a really good year with tomatoes, and it's even afforded me the opportunity to grow melons successfully for the first time. So the greenhouse is really important to me. I wouldn't be without this greenhouse. It gives me an extended growing season, a type of gardening that I haven't done before. And so it challenges me as well, but it also gives me somewhere warm to come when it's chucking it down outside and it's freezing cold. So even when the weather's really, really bad, I can still come and be at the allotment. So thank you, Danny, for having me on your channel. So Danny's asked me for one thing that I wouldn't do without in my garden, and that is these here. Now, these are my compost bays and if I was to pull back some carpet and a bit of plastic on here you will see all this lovely homemade compost. Now the great thing about making your own compost is number one you know exactly what's going in it. Number two you're controlling everything because what we're doing here is we are microbe farming and I know that sounds a bit silly but this is packed, it's teeming with life. And we take this life, we spread it on our garden, and we spread those microbial life to our garden. Things like bacteria, fungal spores, protozoas, and all of this other stuff we put into our garden. And that then, in turn, uses the humus or organic matter that's in the compost and it feeds that microbial life in our garden. They then reproduce and give us fantastic crops that we want. And it's so important, as you can see, I produce around about five ton a time there, but it's that important that we built these ones that are not quite finished yet. And I've got to put fronts on, but this one already has a load of compost in it. Um, and these are where I am just dumping things. It is really important stuff. Now, as I clear the garden, it'll end up here. All the stuff that is in this one that is nearly done will end up on the garden this weekend. And we have some that hasn't finished breaking down here, but underneath it, if I dig down, this is the sort of stuff that we're pulling out. This has got a little bit left to go, but that was only made a couple of months ago. Whereas this one was probably around about five months and that's ready to go out onto the ground. So the one thing that I wouldn't do without is these. I have some other ideas of things that I wouldn't do without, but this is probably the number one thing for me, compost. It's, you know, it's the life of any garden and without it, you will not survive because what you're doing when you're growing is you're stripping the nutrients out of the ground. This will help you put those nutrients back by introducing the microbial life. I'm Rue from Rue's Life. And Danny, what a fabulous challenge you've set. I really did have to think hard about this one. But I've narrowed it down to the one thing that I genuinely use every time I come across to the garden, whether that's pottering about in the polytunnel or badgering about in the beds outside. And that's my hand trowel. It's such an invaluable piece of equipment for me. So as a no-dig gardener, I do have some long-handled tools, but I don't use them very often. In fact, the one I use the most is my hoe. I'm generally using my hand tools, and the one I use the most is this hand trowel. So whether that's planting things out or digging up weeds, I can even use the handle as a dibber if I need to, and I can use it as a measuring tool. So, you know, one trowel's distance between, for example, each onion set when I'm popping in my onions. So I genuinely couldn't do without my trusty hand trowel. Up the olive and ground plot, just doing a little bit, and uh, just remembered that Danny's asked me to do uh, a little couple of minutes on what I can't do without on the allotment and I had a bit of a think about it but when I thought of it long enough it was blooming obvious. Companion planting and not just companion planting 
brassica and allium companion planting. Let me show you and I'll put I'll try and find a few stills from last year because obviously there's not an awful lot growing at the moment but um, like I said just a, just a quick couple of minutes so I shan't bore you but I do love planting alliums with brassicas and here we've got some troy in with the cauliflower North Foreland. Now companion plants work in several ways they you can maximise the use of space, they can help each other repel pests and they can speed up growth. Now believe it or not, these two do all three of those. The onions grow shallower than the cabbage or the cauliflower, so um, you're maximising the depth of soil. Right, we've got uh, more onions in here, this is Troy onions in with some calabrese. And the other thing they do is they repel pests. So the onion smell, as you know, onion smell, the smell repels many of the pests that plague brassicas, like uh, butterflies, the caterpillars, and uh, whitefly. The smell confuses them, so they fly away to a neighbouring plot. Oh, sorry. <laughs> well, we've got some more in here that have been for, uh, in for a week or so with the uh, anti-pigeon deterrent there. Um, and what they also do, they, they speed each other's growth up. So brassicas and onions use different forms of nitrogen. Brassicas use the ammonia form and, not, and onions use the nitrate form. So the brassicas end up nice and sweet, especially things like turnips, nice and sweet and round, whereas spring onions go nice and long and thin and slender. It's also a good way to counter overfeeding. So if you overfeed, um, the brassicas take one form of the nitrogen and the onions take the other form. So uh, you're not some flooding them like, you know. So onions and brassicas are a great triple whammy, but another good one is marigolds with tomatoes. So the marigolds emit a chemical that kills um, tomato root pests. The marigold flowers attract beneficial insects like hoverflies and things like that. And their smell repels aphids. So a couple of triple whammies for you there, guys. Probably gone on longer than two minutes, but you know me, I can talk the hind legs off a donkey. Take care and I'll catch you soon. Uber. Good morning. It's November 10th. It's zero degrees out here. Danny had asked um, at the grapevine allotment to do a one minute clip of what I couldn't do without in my garden. And I think that would have to be my polytunnel. It's freezing cold here. And even if it was pouring rain, I could still be in here doing things. I keep all of my brassicas, well, half of them in here in the winter. Everything's covered up with fleece. In fact, I've just bought another 30 plus feet of fleece um, to keep things as best I can inside here. And other than that, there's not really anything else I do in the winter. So polytunnel, yeah, for sure. Number two would be my brassica cage that Gerald built me, which I've shown you before. But uh, yeah, definitely my polytunnel. Oh, it's cold. Thank you, Danny. And thank you for inviting me onto your channel. And Danny is asking a question. He's asked, what could I not do without on my plot or my garden? And I'm going to show you exactly what it is now. So these have been absolutely amazing. They're a massive space saver for a start. Now I've got two, these are the chist of cheap arches from Wilco's and they're just two joined together. Two and then a gap and then joined together with cane, strengthened. And I've actually got some old curtain poles in here just to strengthen it for the wind. So really cost effective, but you know, look how much space this saves. I grow, I can grow beans over here. I could grow any sort of climbing crop over here, including flowers as well. And this is space that you wouldn't be able to use, would you? They are a massive, massive win for me. Hi everyone. So Danny's asked me to put together a video just to show you my number one tool that I use in my garden and my allotment plot. Um, and it's this. It's my gardener's log book. Um, so in here, I put everything from when I've sowed something to when it's germinated and also when I plant it out. So the other thing I keep a log of is when I plant something out, I take a photograph of it. Um, so that way I can see and look back year on year what it looked like when I planted it out and when I planted it out. Um, so I'll show you an example here. This was a photo I took this year of my pumpkins when I'd sown them and germinated them just before I planted them out. So I knew roughly when I was going to plant it out. And if I show you my log book now, just what I record in there, it's just something you can refer back to in the following years so you can track what, what your garden did, what worked well, 
and unfortunately what didn't work well and what you might have killed that year um so that's my one number one go-to tool for me um it's my log book for my gardener's journal now first of all thank you very much for the invite danny i really do appreciate this and um hopefully someone will find this useful now he asked us to name our number one gadget that we simply can't be without at the allotment and mine's a little bit of an unusual one and not one you would normally associate with allotments however this gadget that i'm about to show you is something that i simply can't be without and i would not have been able to achieve everything that i have done without it and this is my number one gadget as most people who know and watch my youtube channel channel i have hundreds of gadgets that i like can't be without but this really is the number one and the reason for that is because all of this roofing on the shed the tin sheets the plastic sheets i think there's the garage i have a 16 foot garage i have eight other sheds and the clad in some shape or form with tin sheeting and or plastic roofing but i do use this almost on a weekly basis i find a use for it all the time Sometimes I want to separate two pieces of wood or cut a pallet down or something like that. And you can get between the wood, cut through the nails. It just makes life so much easier for disassembly. And also, as I say, for cutting the sheets. That's my number one gadget. So thanks very much for the invite, uh, Danny. I really do appreciate this. Uh, and I hope someone finds this of some interest. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Have a think now, but that one thing that you can't be without in your garden and pop it in the comments below. I'm Danny and this is The Grapevine Garden.